Welcome to the University of Chicago. My name is Periana Wilson. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I serve as the graduate intern on the student prep team in the Office of Career Advancement here at UChicago. I am responsible for advising numerous undergraduate students in the areas of career exploration, internship and job searching, review of career materials, and so much more. I will conclude by giving examples of how I integrated theory and course readings into practice during my internship. I will begin by identifying the learning outcomes that I created towards the beginning of this semester. Then I will discuss how I met my learning outcomes. This presentation will give you a snapshot into my internship experience this semester. I had three learning outcomes for this semester. My first learning outcome is to learn the operation of the Office of Career Advancement and the services it offers to University of Chicago students. My second learning outcome is learn about career advising and the exploratory approach to advising. My final learning outcome is gain insights into how student development theory influences the work that occurs within the Office of Career Advancement. All of my learning outcomes were met, but I will talk specifically about how I met two of them. Learning outcome number one, which again is, learn the operation of the Career Advancement Office and the services that it offers to the University of Chicago students. I met this outcome simply by doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with a lot of the team members in the office. With a staff of about 50 people and such a robust Career Advancement Center, it was important for me to learn about the different moving parts within the office in order to be successful in my role. In addition, the team I work on, the student preparation team, are considered the generalists of the office, meaning we need to be well-versed in all aspects of the Career Advancement Center. There's the executive and administrative team, the employer relations and development team, the external relations team, the student preparation team, which I work on, the business programs team, the UChicago careers and entrepreneurship team, the UChicago careers and education professions team, the UChicago careers and health professions team, the UChicago careers and journalism arts and media team, the UChicago careers and law team, the Freed Public Policy and Service Program team, and the UChicago Careers in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics team. There are a lot of teams within the Office of Career Advancement here at UChicago. I met learning outcome number one by meeting with at least one person from each of these teams, though in some cases I met with anywhere between two and four people from each of the teams. Each one-on-one -on -one meeting was similar to an informational interview. I got to learn about their contribution to their team and the larger career advancement team and what they do. They also gave me advice before I started meeting with students. Through these meetings, I was able to learn about the organizational structure of career advancement. I also learned about the different programs and services that each individual team does, which allowed me to be more knowledgeable when advising students, since I would often have to refer them to other areas within career advancement or give them advice on different interdepartmental programs to participate in. For example, if a student came to meet with me but expressed interest in journalism, I would suggest that they meet with a specific person on the UChicago Careers in Journalism and Media team and recommend any upcoming programs that the UCI Journalism and Media team is offering or any services that are specific to that team that the student may benefit from. I met learning outcome number two by first going through a week-long training on career advising. Then I started shadowing appointments of other team members within the office for approximately a week and a half. Afterwards, I co-led appointments, so I started contributing to the advising sessions that I was shadowing. Then I started taking appointments on my own. 
In addition to shadowing, I learned about the exploratory approach to career advising through trial and error in my own appointments. Often, I would get a lot of students come in for career exploration sessions. These are my favorite because they allow for a holistic approach to advising. In career exploration sessions, I encourage the student to take a career exploration assessment. Then, based on their responses, I help them identify experiential learning opportunities offered through career advancement like externships or job shadowing opportunities, career tracks, and internships because they think the best way they will figure out what they want to do is by trying out different short-term career-related opportunities that give them exposure to certain industries, certain skills, different company types, and so much more. My first example of putting theory into practice in my internship involves emotionally intelligent leadership. Emotional intelligence is a measure of the ability to be empathetic and tuned into others' thoughts, feelings, and attitudes while remaining aware of one's own thoughts, feelings, and attitudes, and finally considering the ways in which all of these things interact. There are three components to emotionally intelligent leadership. They are as follows. Consciousness of self, consciousness of others, and consciousness of context. About a month ago, I had a U Chicago alumnus call in for an appointment. This was my first time facilitating an appointment over the phone and my first time advising an alum of the university. The student had originally made an appointment to discuss job search strategies because he'd graduated a year and a half ago and had not secured a job at all. Right before his appointment, though, he received the notification that he was being offered a job. The student was still very unhappy, though, because the job was not in his career field of choice. I entered the conversation in a very calm manner, talking a bit softer and slower, hoping that he would match my demeanor. He did not. He was very combative, often cutting me off and raising his voice. I proceeded in this calm manner, giving the student advice on how to use his recent job victory to be intentional in planning for his next career move since I assured him that the position he was offered as a marketing coordinator is indeed a good segue into what he ultimately wants to do in graphic design. The next day, I had my one-on-one with my supervisor. She mentioned that she'd met with the same student I met with. At this point, I thought for sure the student had reached out to a superior because he was dissatisfied with the service he received from me. It was quite the contrary. My supervisor mentioned that the student was very difficult to work with because of his combative nature, but also that he told her that he'd met with me prior to their conversation and that I was a great help to him. When I talked out the situation with my supervisor, I explained to her that I was very nervous entering the conversation with the student after noting how angry he was, so I had to be mindful of my demeanor and how I would be received, especially over the phone where it is sometimes difficult to read emotions. Then, I expressed to her that I approached the situation from a place of empathy. I understood why the student was so frustrated having graduated over a year ago and not landing a job. And talking to someone from the office who was supposed to help him secure work and maybe even hearing advice that he'd already heard and tried before, I'm sure made the student even more frustrated. I'm grateful that I approached the situation in the way that I did, and I see the value of emotional intelligence in the workplace, especially when working with others. My second theory to practice example relies on self-authorship. I had an alum come in three weeks ago because he'd been fired from his job due to the company downsizing. He wasn't upset, though. He expressed that he'd majored in econ to follow in his father's footsteps, but quickly realized after working that this wasn't the field for him. We've been meeting regularly as I'm trying to help this alum figure out what it is that he wants to be doing. We discuss his personal interests, his passions, and his previous experiences. Earlier this week, he expressed that after doing some reading and soul searching, he wants to do data analyst work in real estate. The student went from following in his father's footsteps to seeing a need to define his own career and then actually doing it by making a career change. Taking a holistic approach to advising and using self-authorship as a framework is very beneficial.